It's now time for the changing weather. It's the moment a lot of you have been waiting for, the winter forecast being unveiled right now. I'm meteorologist Gary Lezak with Weather 2020. I'm excited to share this with you. It is absolutely mind-blowing. We have cracked the code of long-range weather prediction. We don't have all the answers, but many of them, and we're going to share some of those with you on our insights. So the weather pattern has set up. And I'm going to take you through a whole bunch of slides. As I said, it took us a long time to put this together. And we'll make some conclusions, and we'll get to some snowfall totals forecasts and state by state for a few of you as well. So let's go take a look and see what's going on. All right, the winter forecast guide is out now. The weather pattern is cycling, and we have spent the past 37 years cracking the code of weather forecasting. All right, so let's get right into it. Where did this all come from? Well, this is on my wall right over here. It's been on my wall since I made this back in 1988. And I described what happened in the winter in Oklahoma. This is Oklahoma City. As you can see, there I am a long time ago. All right, and that was a snowstorm in November. Then a one foot snowstorm, a major ice storm, another one foot snowstorm, this time with wind drifts, drifting snow. And so snow drifts, you can see there, look at that. And then it snowed when I went to Lake Tahoe, and then it snowed again in March. So point is, this was an exciting winter. And this is the year I discovered that the weather pattern was cycling. It's like we have a crystal ball now. There's an accuracy formula, which is the LRC combined with El Nino, La Nina, La Nina which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation Index. AO and NAO and other wild cards. So you can see as we gaze into this crystal ball, all five 2024 US land falling hurricanes predicted weeks to months in advance using the LRC technology and methodology. 91% accurate on predicting severe weather setups. We'll have that for you in February. And winter storms are predicted with precision. Some of you have requested a week-by-week -week analysis of when these winter storms are going to strike. And we'll be putting that together in the next couple of weeks as well. How does it all work? Well, a lot of you have been sharing this with us for the past 20 plus years. And it was actually named by the bloggers at KSHP. But here's where we are now, likely in the second cycle of the pattern already. And you can read through the description of what is the LRC, all right? So it's, we use the cycling weather pattern. Once we know what it is, and we've just pretty much identified it, we can now make predictions all the way through next September, predicting hurricanes, severe weather outbreaks, winter storms, floods, droughts, and most significant weather events that happen around the world, around the Northern Hemisphere. The LRC is the centerpiece of the big atmospheric jigsaw. There's also an LRC in the Southern Hemisphere, which is that most of that area is ocean, and they likely have some interaction. And there's other factors. Let's go over some of those factors. A second big piece of the puzzle is what a lot of weight the entire forecast into. The El Nino Southern Oscillation Index. This failed these other forecasts this past summer during the hurricane season. The hyperactive hurricane season forecast was based on a La Nina that was forecast to develop by August. But look, it hasn't developed yet, and it's, we're now into December, so it likely is not going to be a La Nina winter. So you see here, one, two, three periods, December, January, February, January, February, March, February, March, April, of La Nina conditions below minus 0.5 forecast, although that's even suspect. You have to have five of these in a row for the Climate Prediction Center to turn this blue and make it a La Nina. We expect it to be a neutral winter, not a La Nina winter. 
the Arctic Oscillation Index and the North Atlantic Oscillation Index, the NAO and the AO, in October when it was really warm and dry for a long time, remember? The AO went way up to plus four. And it hasn't returned to that level, okay? But it's been trending down, as you can see the trend. And there's a chance in January and February it goes deep negative just once. If it does that, Arctic air will blast south and storms will get energized and suddenly there could be a lot of snow in some spots that haven't had much. So I'm expecting this to happen this winter once we're seeing some evidence that could happen. So uh, we'll see. 40% probability that we get an AO and an AO big dip as we go into January and February. If it stays positive like it was in October, then the jet stream retreats and it's a warm winter with very little snow, except for way up north. So something to monitor. We're monitoring the AO and NAO. That's one of the pieces of the puzzles, two of the pieces of the puzzle. Here's an example of one of our forecasts a couple years ago. January 4th, there was this mammoth storm coming into California. And by the way, La Nina failed forecasters this winter too, because it was a very wet winter when it was forecast to be very dry. You can see this uh, upper level storm, very big, what we call a synoptic scale mid-latitude cyclone. And then we predicted, based on the cycle that year, which was close to 50 days, that it would return around January 24th, and it did. So the, it's not the exact same storm that returns, it's the conditions that cycle back through. And you can see there's another storm in close to the same area, predicted 50 days out. And this is just one snapshot. It's the entire cycling pattern that is cycling, not just one day. This year's pattern, there are two main phases of the 2024-2025 LRC. There is this phase where storms come across the Pacific. They try to go into the Pacific Northwest then dive into the Southern Rockies. This produced a big three, four foot snowstorm out in the eastern plains of Colorado um, in November. This part of the pattern is gonna return in each cycle. It lasts two weeks or three weeks. And so a couple of the storms may break into Southern California, but there's some concern there if it's staying dry. And this part of the pattern would warm up on the East Coast. Then there's another phase that may be just as dominant, it's been dominating lately, with this trough in the east, lake effect snows, a few little better clippers, and possibly one or two big storms. So this will bring most of the precipitation that the east coast is going to see. So they have a warmer and drier phase there, and then a wetter and stormier phase. But since they're moving inland, it may be hard to have a lot of snow, but they still could have one or two that hit the eastern cities. The other phase, as you can see here, will be more significant for the plains, and this will lead to severe weather outbreaks this spring. So those are the two main phases. In one half of each cycle, we're expecting anomalies like this with very dry conditions from Southern California into Oklahoma and Texas, and along this mid-Atlantic states down into Florida with a little stretch of above average precipitation for North Dakota, Minnesota, down into the plains. The other half of the cycle shows much wetter conditions across the Corn Belt. Still some dry conditions up here in the Dakotas and especially in Montana and dry in California. And so this is a one half of the cycle as well, one half of the cycle. So about, we have sort of like a bipolar weather pattern where there's like two completely different things happening. Combine them together. This is the forecast from January to June for precipitation. So right now we're expecting, especially as we get to April, May, June for, for the planting and growing seasons of farmers, keep in mind this, as you can see, most of the Corn Belt not expected to be dry, maybe too much rain over some of these areas, especially as we go to March, April, May. And then you can see Montana continues to be dry, stretching into North Dakota, so we'll have to watch that. And the Mid-Atlantic is drying out there. A little spot of uh, wetter weather from around Savannah, Georgia, up into Myrtle Beach. So that's 
combined, and then you add the temperatures, an overall milder than normal winter expected, near average to above average temperatures expected across most of the United States. We'll watch for that January and February cold blast that could last for a couple of weeks. But overall, as you can see, near to above average temperatures. The LRC models have come out and we have these low end range of snow. There's even some that show a little lower than these and a higher end range. So for Kansas City, for example, 18 inches of snow, I'm expecting about 21. So a little bit in this range, but 18 to 31 inches of snow. In Fargo, 34 inches to 60 inches of snow. And this is by May. And for Omaha, 21 inches to 43 inches of snow. Chicago, 28 to 64. Denver, 48 to 77. And Breckenridge, 226 inches to 358 inches in the ski areas. Minneapolis, 47 inches to 101 inches. And Oklahoma City, 6 inches to 14 inches of snow. So I'm expecting a couple of systems to create some snow in the Oklahoma City area. Our LRC model percentage of average precipitation shows this big anomaly back over New Mexico, stretching up into the plains. You can look at this. And then for the Corn Belt, little bands of rather significant precipitation is expected with the least likely area to get hit parts of the Dakotas. This is the total rainfall four to eight inches of rain in the low end to as much as 43 inches of rain um, way down in southeast Kansas, southwest Missouri. So we'll see if that much is possible there. Our model and our Weather 2020 Vision Dashboard that you can see on our website, it's available if you would like to get your hands on this. And you can do go down to your county, but this is for the entire Corn Belt. And the blue lines that go above this light blue line, this is the average line, that's a wet week, the end of the year. Then dry, then a wet period in February. Then a dry spell, then another wet period in March, and a very wet period possible as we go into May. May looks to be time to be very wet. So something to keep in mind. But you can go a week by week. This is for the whole Corn Belt. We can go state by state as well. In fact, North Dakota, for example, is expecting this. This is what our model shows with 60 to 69 percent of rainfall. So below average in the southwestern part of North Dakota right now. This will adjust every Saturday night. These models adjust, but the LRC is becoming established. So it's not going to change a lot from this point forward. Eastern half of North Dakota is forecast to have near to above average precipitation through June. And then snowfall-wise, as much as 70 inches of snow possible way up here in northwest um, North Dakota. I put the aggressive range on here, so but still it shows 20 to as much as 70 inches of snow. And this includes the March, April, May snowstorms that could be significant. In South Dakota, same kind of thing as you can see. You can go through each one of these states and um, just look through it on your own. There's Iowa and others as you can see there. So let me go all the way down here and there's Kansas and Missouri. As you can see here, there's Missouri and Snowfall, Missouri, 8 inches to 25 inches of snow. And then I go through the appendix at the, at the end. So case studies and additional information. We're talking about the hurricane forecast. One thing we're really proud of this year is that this was our forecast. 150, it's like the quarterback rating for, for a team. Um, how did we do? 150. This is 161.6 is what actually happened. And this is what the other guys predicted. Okay, 220 and 230. They're expecting the hyperactive season. And they're claiming, they're lying. They're literally lying. All right, they did not get it right. It was not a hyperactive season. It wasn't 28 named storms. It was 18, and we predicted 17. So just interesting. Some, some stuff for you to look through for sure, as you can see there. So anyway, that is the winter outlook. Thank you for listening and watching. Go through the graphics. Let me know if you have any questions at all. I'll try to answer them. 
And as we go through the season, we'll update this. And on our weather2020.substack.com account, a lot of you have that. Thank you so much. And um, you'll get the weekly updates as we crack the code of this long-range forecasting. And I'm meteorologist Gary Lezak, and have a fantastic winter begins in just a few days. Thank you for watching The Changing Weather.